morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. It is good to see everybody. We are going to talk about unlocking your potential. So gather around, come settle in, grab your cup, and let's have a sip and a chat. Okay, good. All right, so we are going to go ahead and talk about unlocking your potential. Let us do a quote for the day from Coffee with Colby. Yep. Yeah? So grab your book if you got one. Let's see what we got. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. When you doubt and when you question, know that we understand. And in your darkest space, we encourage you to find the inner strength to love greater than you ever have before, to shine your brightest, for love is the most healing tool we have given you to share. So there we go. That is our quote for the day. So let us talk about unlocking your potential. You know, there's a lot of times where we play it safe, right? We kind of go about our life and our business and our journey Yet we tend to play it safe. We forget to take chances. We forget to put ourselves out there, right? And especially like if you're limited, like if you kind of are in a pattern, you're not even necessarily thinking of how can I do this or how can I stretch myself? And then there are things that come in where you may feel uncomfortable doing it. You, you're you not really feeling confident in it. So it could be, let's say, you know, you want a raise and you're ready for that raise. Yet there's some fear about asking for it, right? There's fear of what if it's declined? What if they then point out what I'm not doing right? What if it creates some unsettling? So there's a lot of times where we know we want more and we know we're meant for more Yet we're afraid to ask it. We're afraid to even put it out there. And we're afraid to kind of stand in our power, right? So we're afraid to stand in our power. And that is because, you know, it could be that you're afraid someone will leave you. If it's a relationship, right? Well, I'm asking too much. I'm going to push them away. Or my job, I'm not really worth that amount. So it may create a problem, right? So with this, it is about saying, look, what is my potential? And then a lot of things, you know, I see this a lot with a lot of light workers and, and many people, to be honest, what do I have to offer? Like there's so many psychics and mediums and Reiki and, and all, there's so many of them. How am I going to make a difference? Or I'm just another one of them, right? Rather than saying, look, this is something special to offer. This is something to put out there and to know I'm meant to work in this way. And again, sometimes we compare ourselves too much as well. So when you compare yourself and then you see someone else just kind of crushing it, then you say to yourself, oh, I, I can't do that or I'm not as good or, you know, we tend to put ourselves down and we tend to kind of minimize our potential rather than stepping into it. So I want to encourage you today to put yourself out there to really stretch those muscles that you've got and know that of course you have something to offer. And hopefully it is in a different way, right? That that's the whole idea is that you are offering it in a different capacity and you are offering it in a way that is expressive to you and who you are and what your message is. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of inner work that needs to happen in order for you to discover who you are and what is your message and what is your methodology and how do you want to present it, right? There's so many different, there's so many different like ways out there that it can be done. So it really is finding what works for you and what is most authentic to you. I think that's the most important thing, right? Is being authentic to who you are and what your message is and how you want to convey that message. Again, you can fall into the trap of XYZ is doing it this way. So I'm assuming this is how I need to do it. And you don't, 
It literally can be something completely new, but as long as it's in alignment with who you are, that's the most important thing. So it's kind of getting down to the inner stuff and, and that's hard, right? Like we can say, oh, I'll just do the inner work. Like just go. But the inner work is some hard stuff and here's why. And maybe this will be its own coffee with Colby, right? But the inner work really takes you to go inwards. Quietness, right? That quiet mind, right? That, that essence of really going deep to figure out who are you and what do you bring to the table? And rather than pushing through it, again, we can kind of rush through so we get those answers, but then the answers don't really come. The answers absolutely come when you are still and when you are patient. And when that mind is quiet, you start to peel away. And 100%, right? It's kind of peeling away the layers of what you've told who you are, right? So the difference between what has been pasted onto you, right? Through other people's projections, through how you've been raised, through past experiences, kind of through what you've been told, that mindset versus who is your soul from the inside? Who is your soul from the, the moment it came into the physical realm and really getting deep on that level. And that level through the experiences is how you understand who you are, how you want to work, and also not berating yourself. Here's the thing, through being authentic and through being deeply, deeply connected to who you are and understanding what that is, that's how you can unapologetically express who you are and, and how you want to share that. And when you do that, it's easy. Then you'll find that what you want to share comes to you easy, right? Because it's already part of you. It's already in the storage. It's already in the library of what is needed. So give yourself that. And now let's talk about limiting potential again. You, why can't you? I mean, that's the thing. Like you say, oh, I could never. Why? Why could you never? Right? Oh, I could never really be successful because, or I'm really an introvert, or really I'm not sure where to start. You may not know where to start. So then Find out where you take classes, who is going to teach you, who is going to give you those steps. You know, I know for me, I take people from step A of feeling like you have intuition to all the way to taking you to do this professionally if you want to, right? And then from there, how do you do it professionally, right? So th there are people out there that no matter where you are in your journey, there are people there who will help you. As they say, when you are ready, the teacher will appear, right? And that's absolutely true. So give yourself this. There's no reason you certainly can't be as successful as your neighbor, your friend, a fellow Facebooker, right? You absolutely can. The only thing, the only thing that is standing in your way, honestly, is your mindset. It's your mindset. So we got to work through that. We got to, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking a moment and I'm tuning into some of it. I'm like, oh goodness gracious, unworthiness, you know, lack of experience, uh, not knowing. Like, okay, I get it. I, I, I totally understand and I get it and I'm with you and I have been there. I have been there. So but it's a, it's an effort too, right? So we can't, all right, here's the thing. I can't just say to you, oh, unlock your potential. Go girl, go boy, just go do it. it. It is a process. So it's a process of what are the limiting beliefs? What, what are the fears? You know, where are you at your life? Like, you know, you, you may have responsibilities that also feel like they're hindering you. So how do we get rid of everything, the excuses, the blocks, the hindrances, how we own up and stand in our power and really unleash your soul being. Your soul being is meant to be heard. 
You, you are meant to be out there and shining your light, shining it so bright that the haters need sunglasses. <laughs> and that's the other thing. I see a lot of people that are worried about what others are going to think the fear of being judged, the fear of not being good enough, the fear of not being worthy, the fear of being called out. Uh, and that's, you know, the fear of being called a fraud. That's a big one within the light worker community. And it's horrifically sad. It's, it's so sad. Let me explain one thing and one thing very, very clear to you. All right. If you have a fear of being called a fraud, you are not a fraud. Okay. You are not. All right. The ones that truly are not in this. All right. The ones that are fraudulent that are looking to take advantage of someone. They don't even have this thought. All right. They, that thought's not even there. All right. So I want you to let go of that thought and let go of that belief system. It certainly doesn't help you. It certainly doesn't empower you. And it certainly does not unlock your potential. So let's get down to what does unlock your potential. All right. That belief in yourself, that belief in your connection, that belief in your all knowing, that really surrendering and trusting your passion, your purpose, and your path. Now, Let's get to the idea, Colby, I don't know my purpose. I know I'm meant for something more. I know that I feel a nudge, but I don't know what that nudge is. And that's where I get lost and that's where I get stuck and that's where I really find myself struggling. All right, very valid, 100%, I get you. We can do all the, what would I do for free and all of that fun stuff, what doesn't feel like work. Really, again, it goes into writing down just things you enjoy and not overthinking that part of it. Like I, I realized this kind of purpose for me was because I absolutely found myself just jumping in, giving people advice, like uninvited, like they wanted to know if an outfit looked good on them in the dressing room and they didn't even know me. And I'd say, oh my gosh, listen, this is perfect for you. Or, <laughs> well, I like this one better than that one, right? I would just kind of jump in and I would just be there for people. Or I found myself going out to restaurants or being in public locations and people would just pour their heart out to me. And then they would say, oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm saying this. I, I, I don't even know why I'm, I'm really sharing all this with you. I know I don't know you. So those are the indicators that there's something there where you're meant to talk with people and help them sort out their problems and, and help give them some direction as innocently as it is, right? So there's, there's many components to this. Maybe you're just naturally good at being creative and it, it literally could be that it's crafts or art or writing. It could be something even you're really, really good with numbers and organization and you really enjoy creating systems for people. I have to tell you, Systems are fantastic and I certainly can use someone in my life that is a really good system maker, right? How do we streamline? So regardless of where your talents lie, it's really getting down to understanding what you take for granted about you is an absolute gift for someone else. And that's, that's the idea, like don't limit who you are and what you have to offer. You are magnificent. So again, remember, listen to this, okay? What you take for granted about yourself is an absolute gift for another. And so even say to yourself, what do I take for granted about myself? What am I good at that I don't realize? Like, I just think it's easy, right? And so that's what I want you to focus on. What do you take for granted about yourself that comes easy to you and that you enjoy? And that's your starting point. So when you start there, you can then kind of springboard off of it and really bring everything in for you. And that will help start to shape ideas. The other thing that I found really, really helpful is 
to see what your friends, peers, and, and coworkers like. Ask them to to kind of give you three words that they feel describe you. You know, you can even put it on your social media to to your friends. You're going to be really, really surprised at the response because, you know, we're really hard on ourselves. I'm hard on myself. Um, I know many of you are hard on yourself. And I find that to be so disheartening. I, I find that to just... It just be so disheartening that we do that to ourselves. You know, we really should be loving ourselves first and foremost and, and be our best self-advocate, right? So when you put this out there to people, you're going to be surprised at the response because they're going to give you words that you may not have thought of yourself as. And it's a really nice eye opener because you will see how you impact other people's lives, the difference that you make in their lives. And again, that can absolutely help you when you're trying to define what is your passion and what is your purpose. Body image and our self image and our personality even, we can really tend to be unloving and unkind to ourselves. So if you find yourself speaking negative self-talk to yourself, please take a moment to reframe that thought and that wording to make it positive and loving towards yourself. If you find yourself doing that to another, all right, so you're scrolling through social media and you come across and you find yourself having that thought towards another, I do ask you to take a moment to reframe that thought and reframe it to something positive. You know, there's no need to be negative towards anyone or even say things negatively. And I, and I saw this going a little bit out here to express this. I saw this post. This post was by a light worker. All right. So this was by a light worker. It was meant to be funny. And I personally didn't find the humor in it, but it was a heavyweight person, person that would be perceived as overweight in Western civilization society, sitting on a tiny little chair with a dog underneath of it. And you may have seen it. Basically, it says the trust of the woman, the trust the woman puts in the chair to hold her, the trust of the dog puts in the chair as well, right? And so I just feel like that was really harmful. I don't feel that it was kind. And I don't feel like we, in a way to me, I felt that that was somewhat shaming. I, I certainly didn't find it to be fun. It kind of broke my heart. And it broke my heart that it was a light, work, a light worker that did it, right? Because if anyone should be sending out positive vibes, I think it's us, right? I really do. However, you're going to see this all day long. You're going to see this all day long. So I ask of you to send out love in that moment, to send out kindness that that person, that light worker, hopefully gets to a place where, where they see it maybe more positively and loving. And, you know, you send out love to that was someone's image. And I send out love to that person. And this is what we can do. It's easy. It's so easy to be around people and groups and to fall into the negativity and, and the gossip and all of that. So I'm just going to ask that, you know, as you go through this, positive self-talk about yourself and about others, okay? Because when you, here's the thing, when you have self, uh, positive self-talk about you and about all of those around you, it immediately raises your vibration, all right? It immediately puts you in a state of confidence, right? Because you don't have to compare yourself to another. There doesn't have to be something negative. There doesn't have to be something hurtful, by doing that, you put yourself in this beautiful vibration that, again, will help you stay in alignment with your passion, with your purpose, and, and all of that. So I just want to reach out to you to say, look, you are meant for more. You are meant to be in this space and this place where the universe gives you opportunities. They put this in front of you. I want you to take advantage of it, all right? 
Take advantage of what is given to you rather than focusing on what isn't. Remember, anything that you've been through really is the universe's way of preparing you for those next steps in your life, okay? And it may be an opportunity for you to help others or to teach others or to share with others. You know, it, it's so hard when you lose a loved one, especially like when you see a parent lose a child. I mean, I mean, how can I, in all honesty, you know, how can I really justify that? In, in all honesty, if I'm being truthful, how can I completely justify that loss and, and make sense of it? I, we kind of can't, all right? I can give you the belief systems of, hey, you know, this is about helping you to really help others and to put you in a place. It's about that child really learned all of its soul lessons. Uh, it got to graduate. You know, we have these beliefs that may kind of help with understanding and, and help with that devastating impact. But it, I don't really feel like it feels fair to, to the person. And, and that's a struggle. And there's got to be something more to it. And maybe something more that, that we don't yet understand, that we yet haven't come in touch with. And yet we don't know until we are on the other side. And then maybe it all makes sense. Then maybe it's like, oh, this is it. I do know that we reunite with them. I do know that we certainly never lose. They're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> um, we, we never lose that connection. But how do I how do I make it fair? I can't make it fair. I can't make it fair. But this is what I'm speaking about, right? You don't have to have all the answers. It doesn't have to be perfectly in a bow. It just has to be about you putting yourself out there, not limiting yourself not letting limiting beliefs stop you, not letting anything where you feel that you can't, if it's, I can't, I don't know, anything like that, let's just start breaking that. Let's just start kind of breaking that away and saying, I can, and let me dive down to see how I can. So find the people that can help you, reach out to them, learn from them, really give yourself this opportunity to just be everything and more that you've imagined, okay? All right, so I do hope this has helped. Please share it. Please, if this has resonated with you, if you have enjoyed this message, please share it. Hit the like button on my Facebook page because when I go live, I'm gonna be doing more of lives, just as an FYI. So. I'm gonna be doing more lives. So you may wanna make sure you are on that like button and subscribe to my page so that you don't miss out because there's some exciting lives coming up. Also, Thursday night, you guys, guess who's in the house on the Colby Rebel Show? Lisa Williams. That is right, that world acclaimed psychic medium on my show. We are taking your calls on air. So make sure you watch, get dialed in. Also Tuesday, really special. These tickets are selling incredibly fast. So this, this event is going to sell out. Okay. So it's March 2nd. It is a zoom event. It is live. It is 4 PM Pacific time. It is 7 PM Eastern standard time. Lisa and I are doing an event where we are doing an a, evening or afternoon of spirit messages. Okay. You want to grab your ticket, please. I, I promise you this is going to sell out. And then you may reach out and say, oh my gosh, it's sold out. Can I? We want once those tickets are sold, it's sold. So please, if you're interested, you want to see Lisa work and us join together. We have a blast together. It really flows really nice. Uh, come and grab those tickets. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I appreciate the love. I appreciate you. Lots of love to you. Remember to shine your light and shine it bright. Bye, everyone.